Hello, good morning. My name is Matthew. Um, I'll be showing you a walkthrough for now to do just X-ray classification and localization using CNN. Uh, I'll try to make it as short as possible. I know it's really a huge uh, work if I running through what I've done. It, it really it may take like more than an hour to record or to show you the walkthrough but I'll try to skip some of skip through some of the Jupyter notebooks so I, I'll, I'll take you to the major area on how to do this uh, just X-ray classification and do the visualization uh, without much ado uh, I would like to give uh, a little background about uh, just X-ray classification and why I thought like it's really important for me to focus my practicum in this area. I I work in a healthcare. I work in a hospital setup, and I've been working as a a biomedical engineer. I've been working especially on uh, medical device integration. I've had uh, some kind of uh, sweet knowledge in x-rays on how to work with x-ray machines and I've appreciated the work done by radiologists and physicians in this area. It has become overwhelming for them to do image interpretation and I've been trying to see if there is a way with the, from a data science perspective we can be able to make the models for them which can make work easy for them because they are kind of overburdened. There are not many people in this uh, area and you know with the changes which we have in the current world we are having several examinations or just x-rays or MRI seat scans so at times it becomes overwhelming for them so providing a solution providing this model for them would really be a step ahead and in helping or making them making the work easy for them and especially uh, ensuring that there is that uh, prediction classification of the diseases or the abnormalities and localizing to the exact point in the images or in those images where there is any abnormality so without much ado i'm gonna uh, go through these uh, a few the the, the 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 initial slide or the initial jupyter notebook and kind of show you how we gonna do the eda how we do the visualization on how how we read these images how we get through the data and even read through this data so I'll try to skip most of the write up here so that I can, be able, I can take you directly to where I do the most important part of my my presentation. So you if you have a chance, you, I'm gonna post this one in YouTube and I'll, I'll post it in uh, Cargo and maybe in my GitHub. So feel free to send me a note of correction because I would like to acknowledge that I'm not an expert in this area I'm running uh, and once I'll be working on more of these kind of uh, exercises when I'll be working more of this kind of projects I'll become more of an expert going forward so don't judge me harshly give me a chance to grow and let us grow together as we run together in this. 
thank you so much. I, I've been curated these uh, a number of uh, rings, YouTube rings for those people who don't uh, know much about conversational neural networks. You can go through this YouTube. Uh, there's a Udeka tutorial. There is also another YouTube, uh, two YouTube rings here, which are really awesome and which are, can give you more information about neural networks, deep learning, or deep neural networks, or those. And probably you can be able to get to know the differences between deep neural networks, uh, RNN, recursive neural networks, CNN, the configurational neural networks, and artificial neural networks in general. So let's, let's start with this slide, uh, this Jupyter notebook. Then we go. Uh, my first section is about data correction. Data correction in this area, I didn't really do much because I I use it cargo, and right now I'm, I'm going through cargo API, and in cargo it's easy to easily get all the data which you want. You can just go directly to the data for you go to the API and you go to the competition. Probably I can be able to show you here. So if you are new you can be able to see let me let me go directly to cargo. Okay. So this is my account. I will take you to the cargo data set for the competition for 2021 and at least show you how I did uh, get access to to the data. So that will be quick. So I just went to, this is uh, the cargo, I went to this is the data set we have for the just x-rays I'm sorry that uh, I think my internet is having an issue no, yeah, I was having some disconnection issue so that's why so this is uh, what I'm working from uh, this is a quick uh, it's a quick overview of the data, the data set which I'm working on. There is this fin peak data chest X-ray abnormalities detection. Uh, there is a price of fifty thousand. This is a competition for this year. So there is an overview of why the background information why they think like it's important for us to compete on trying to automatically localize and classify thoracic abnormalities from just the radiographs. So I went, if you go directly to the data, you can be able to see the data which I'm working on. Hopefully this will take us there. Yes. Yeah, this is the data. You see, it's about 191.82 gigabits. So we have uh, the test. These are the test images. There are 3,000. We will go here. It will show all the 3,000 there here. And they are in DICOM, DICOM format. And you go here, there is uh, the training, the training images. The training images are 15,000. They are also in DICOM format. In addition to this, they have given us uh, the sample submission file in CS, it's CSV that's command separated values. We also have uh, the training CSV file. 
So if you want to download, you can download all of it, but I think it's really difficult. So what I did, I decided to go to launch my like my my, my Jupyter notebook for in in cargo in in the cargo API. So I just went directly and created. This is my my account. Uh, this is my Jupyter notebook. It's here, but I didn't want to really to go to this because it wanna open another another part of this, which is which is going to make my my computer go slow. So I'll go back here. So I continue from from where I am. But how I did it, uh, this is how I did it. Let me move this one so at least you see. I just went to home. Then went to this is my account. I I went to add my data set you see so this is me i think i don't i, I went to the to the competition the, my competition these are the competition so i enrolled for this competition then I, i'm about to do my submission but I haven't done yet so i went to data then there is a way you can be able to download the data directly here or get this use this api to download the data set but for me i just went directly and created this my jupyter notebook from here so I have it here this is what i'm working on if i go back here i'll show you how I'm working on this. This is the, the my fashion I'm working on, and it's like uh, the other Jupyter notebooks like in other platform. So this API, in the API, if you want, you can either open a new notebook in the same cargo API and start working on it. But I already have that taken care of, so I can be able to access of my of my data here you see oh, this is my data it's already here i downloaded all my data into here so how these images they are here the test images there you see there are several they are about uh, 2970 more so being like i already have up and third of them there's also test cv test image CSV. This is uh, some of the images which I'm working on. This is right. This is a right easy one to work with, and like those kind of images which I showed you here, which are in Decom format. So I decided to use the Decom format because it's one of uh, the most recommended because it comes with all the metadata, so it has all the information about the images included. So going forward, uh, I can go through this very fast because I think my time is running out and I have more than enough on my crates. So the first thing I did, uh, I, I took care of all the libraries, all the packages which I need in this. I need uh, several of them, all the imports, I'm importing all my libraries for the the people in store. I I put this so I can be able to like download some of the packages which are important in my in whatever I'm working on. So from Piro, from Bydicom, from Keras, all those, all these are the most important libraries which I need. Uh, they are not limited to one of these. Going forward, as I, I continue, as I progress, wherever I need more, I'll just, wherever I need more, I go to the next uh, slide, slide, then the next Jupyter Notebook, then 
I import or even install whichever package which I need. So I'm not only limited to this. So let's see. Let's go through. It's loading. It's taking more time. So this is the version of uh, PyDicom. It's stored in in Conda library version three point uh, Python three point seven. And this is the version. Is the the software version is two point one. So it says like Piro is also already installed. So it's a seven point two or package uh, software package version. So let's continue going down here. Now the work starts. So let me create an array of uh, arrays. I did create a list of uh, data directory to store the decom images. So this is my initial work. Uh, I've used some of the code from what other people have used because it's really in this age we don't reinvent the wheel. We use the same code and it's the same code again and again. That's the real the real truth. We're not going to write our own code and only that you know we give credit where wherever it's due. And um, but initially most of these like you, you can give it whichever name you're gonna give your data. Like for me, I'd say to how this has a data di directory. So when as I go down or as I proceed, I progress this, I'll be using this as uh, the source of my data. So I point everything to data direct di 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 directory is equal to cargo. So this is uh, the link to this. I copied this. So copy file path. So this is the path. So then I did a train directory which uh, points to the OS package dot path, then join this data directory and train. So this it's going to add to the train. So meaning like it, after it points to this, it's going to join the training images into this. So, so that if I want to reference or if I want to access these images, I just go to the di train directory. It will give me, it will take me directly to the images in the train file. And for the test file, I have it as test directory. Uh, the OS package path join this data directory. Uh, and include test. So again, I also created a list of files of all the test or uh, training images. So it's how it has train directory files, and how this is the, 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 the path towards that. So it points me towards that. And this, as you see here, I have a total of 15,000 train directory files and uh, 3000 test directory files so so let's continue so let's see what what do i have really what's this uh, l e n it it gives me is like the rent of my file train directory but this one is pointing me to the exact file so it's trying to give me the rent of this exact file in f file number 14999 this is almost the last file so let's see what it gives me it's it has it has a rent of 104 so in this this file it is 104 it has a rent of 104 meaning this is probably this is just image but it has been all these kind of uh, other features so and I can ask, try to I was trying to find out like you know I was so curious what do I really have in this so let me ask myself this kind of question so this I had a question trying to understand what is this so you see uh, Python is really awesome here it shows me it this is a list so uh, the that 
train direct refires is erased. So this is it shows me it's erased of these are the files which are cargo directory it has a list of how many wow the, it showed me all the images which have <laughs> in this array it's uh, in the list of uh, this file so you see it gave me like the 15,000 <laughs> that's really weird okay so I just gonna close this so let's let me get to the end of this what is how wrong is this one you see it's it's 15,000 is it's 15,000 images again let's go make some work through here rent of the test what about the test files let me find out what how wrong is this oh by the way I, i've kind of pointed to 2999 so i want to see the rent of the last almost the last file or the last picture or the last image in this in this in this in this file or in my list it, it's 103 just 103 components Okay, let's see this one. The rent is three thousand. So I also got something interesting here. Uh, I try, you know, let me kind of create a function so that it can be able to loop through my files, so that I can be able to see what is in the in this in my directory or in this file. So. I decided to use uh, the the loop using for the for loop for i in train directory files print i you see it printed all the images in this file that's weird but that's what I expect you to do though so Let's continue. Oh, my computer is swearing. <laughs> you can hear the sound. It's really working hard.
let me refresh it. It seems like it it hung. So oh yeah, there there it, it comes. Okay. So. Gets uh, so the next one I'm doing uh trying to kind of uh create a function to train my file how to write uh, all these my files so I'm gonna get uh the get a train generator function so I can be able to create the file df image directory and have or the Excel column, Y columns through with the target period of three three twenty and the target height of this. So I got it is from the YouTube. There is one one of this guy who really did a good job in explaining how to do this. So let's see what it gives me. So it 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 it, it does uh, it it's helping me do the normalizing of the Im images here. So the image generator is equal to image data generator. I wanna get the sample Y center to be true, and sample is standard normalization to true. So I'll be moving from directory with a specified part of part part size. And target my image size of 320 by 320. So I set my x column to x column, y column to y columns, and get the cross mod to row part size is equal to the part size. I will shuffle through randomly and get the target size I set above. So the same way as I move down here, I'll do use the same the code only that I'll, I'll be pointing this the x column to the x column, the part size to the part size, and this shovel this time around I'm gonna set it to false. Then now I'm getting the data set to work to work with and in this case I have uh, the training file the training file for me here I have it uh, I pointed this to, to the part of the training CSV file I also have the test file I pointed that one to the test image file with this one here and I did a sample DL file and I pointed this one to sample submission csv file so let me get uh, the the head what is a training df file csv file has for me so i do train df dot head and you see it gives me this so have this is the images the class name or the classification name, the class ID, all this. So you want to do like the first ten, then images. I do ten as the argument. So then it will give me ten of this. So let's we'll see. So it gives me ten. And it starts with zero. So how it does the rest in the computer starts with zero, zero one, then to nine. So these are ten of the images. So I just wrote a little explanation that the train file above is a summary of the findings of the images and their estimate sizes. So it it is get to the ten of the test file. This is uh, the list of the files of the test files. It has it gave me this. No, this the the list the list of 
the training file so it has given me 10 like from to, to 10 so another one I'm gonna do the test one so up to 10 so so there is this one um I'm trying to point to go directly to this specific image the image number 13,999 so I pointed my uh, like I, and I'm trying to kind of plot this image so I use this code like have my image as DS is equal to PyDicom PyDicom edit is the DICOM images dot this DCM read from this specific uh, file list of number 13,999 so then I put show this in pixel array and I'm gonna set it to grayscale so and I'll do it to a minimum of 250 and a maximum of 2500 so these are the dimension the I set it the maximum it can go let's see what it, what it will give me so it has given me oh this is fantastic it gave me the image this is the image which is number 13,999 so this is how it looks like and I've done it in grayscale if I want to it to uh, be the RGP the red, green, blue like to be colored I'll just remove this one from grayscale and it just let's, let's see let's get this one control C So it already gave me this. I'm trying to get this. So uh, I remove the grayscale from the see. Okay. So you see, it gave me that. Yeah, but uh, for images, it really it's awesome when you do it in a gray scale of the so it's so not gray yet yeah. so the PLT um, function, this function, PLT function from above just help me to read through the image of my choice and if I want to change whichever image I want to read I just change, go specifically to to the file number which I want to read. I will just guess like maybe do uh, file number zero because it starts from zero when it starts counting it will start from zero oh. this one So, image number zero is this. So let's go forward and see. You know, shows me an error like there is a an SSL error as a part as if you're going to to the server cannot be made. So I'm having an issue with connection to the server, but hopefully I'll be able to go through and do some of this. So I'm setting the parameters, I'm setting, I'm kind of creating the settings for my image here. I'm writing the function to display the image size statistics for my images going forward. So I upgrade the height, uh, upgrade the function get size statistics. This is what is going to display down the as I'm, I continue moving ahead. So let's see, I set my 
for the image in in that raised directory ds you get to the path to that ds and get to the image so let's see what it excuse me so I, let, let, let me also define the image settings i'm gonna do the window image image into window center window width intercept and slope so these are the parameters i've set for the window image so that the image is going to have the image slope and intercept image mini mean like the minimum point it's gonna be on the window and the maximum the image uh, should move from minimum the drawers pointer to the maximum area so under the time the image then I did uh, set the first daicom field into this uh, using the window in data so I'm gonna set all those and you see it has given me all the settings of my image this one is one of the images which I'm viewing here and it has this these are the all the information about the this image it is a pixel spacing of 0 0.125 5.2125 the pits allocated are 16 bits it stored 12 bit high pits 11 pixel presentation this the window center is at this ds2048 and the width is 496 then we scale the inside of the 0, 0.0 the scale is low but 1.0 then the image compression 00, 0 pixel data an area of 163 9143 elements oh this is huge so images as much as we see we look at them with a the symbolistic eye they contain a lot of data this image to have it together has all these number of elements it's this is so huge you, that's why reading an image and reading a text file are totally different things so you see the file the meta information or this meta data the information about the file itself or or this are contained here so all this is, a, is a information about only that one one picture or one image and you can see it's really huge and you know this is just image number 13,999 which has all this so I set this one to grid so you can be able to see the patterns so here I'm getting the first 20 images and their classification from the train CSV file. So train CSV file read this index column zero. Column zero I'm reading the first the first column. The first column of this file and I need 20 of them. So uh this really the whole what is this? So I'm getting 20 of these and these are facing on the first column this is the first column image ID so I have 20 and this is the information I have so all these are trying to show me the classification whether it, there is no finding meaning like there's nothing which is found any abnormality was not found in the image but like this one seems like there was an autic enrichment detected in this so I'm gonna I see here we have nuns and we have nurse all this means like if there is no finding there is no much information about that image for the y maxima x maxima especially this we are trying to narrow down for example if I, there is some abnormal abnormality which was detected we want to see uh, we we gonna get a retro triangle or oh, I'll give a I'll give, I'll give given a, a retro rectangle onto that size or into that image so that we can be able to localize specifically to this image and see uh, what we have in this so I'm gonna set everything to zero here 
uh, such that I want to fill whatever that is NA to z with 0 and replace whatever that is none with 0 using the numbi uh, package or library. So now, right now, I have all the zeros instead of the nines. So let's see what we have. Uh, let's plot the distribution plot for this file train df specific around the density of the class IDs and the density. So this is what we have. This. So, yeah. I, do this. I don't think I need this one again, but probably because I have to, I want this to hold whichever data file which I have add data the DL, train DF. If I don't, even after changing, dropping the the, the nuns and the na if I don't transform that to this file probably I'll be having the, them again as I move forward so I have this data file df1 that's what I'll be using, working on so the df1 header the head information this is the first few lines of those images identified their class, classification name classification id the ideologist who worked on this so how they did their own predi prediction and the sizes I also do plot the x minimums and see where do they lie So let's get uh, to know the radiologist. How I'm gonna I'm 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 plotting a box plot for the radiologist while doing this X-ray, and this is seems like three of them are really doing a good job here. R8, R9, and R10 seems like to have they have much uh, contribution in terms of interpreting the images. So let's get to the the first two hundred and see what, what do we have here. So this is the pixel data. So DS pixel data for two hundred. So these are some of the characters. This is the information we the first two hundred information in this DS file. This is weird. So I've added some notes here that because of the complexity of interpreting the pixel data, by Dicom provides an easy way to get in in a convenient form pixel array which returns the number array containing the pixel data. So the DS what we do have here. So this is one image DS with or this information of that one image. You look back here, DS was, it was DS. In fact, this was just one of the images. So it's an area of the images in one. So I'm trying to kind of 
a great account a pro pro make a account a uh, classification a uh, protein for this so see what did you give me like if I do that to get the shape of this F that file it's six seven thousand nine hundred and fourteen by seven. Then let's get the protein for this classification. I'm gonna get a historic histogram protein for this. So it shows these these are the classification. So out of this about that one thousand X-ray images there was no finding and the rest there is about 5000 for the memory outic enrichment and this then there is the summary of this summary table i did get the class name and now the counts for this so that no finding just that 1818 out of management 10,000, radio mega 5,000, we're on uh, thickening 4,842. So these are the classification, and we have classification of 960. It seems like we have the minimum we have here is for new, new more thorax, thorax. That's us about 226 out of the 67,000. We had. So let's go and get to the columns and see what we have in the columns. We have this class name, class ID. Okay. Then we're gonna group and see. I didn't really specific. I was not specific on how I'm grouping this. Because I tried to group it uh, by image ID and it was really it was giving me error. Let's see. Group by image ID so I'm not really confused with this. I think I need to do more research on this. So I get another favor of getting to request the NAs and the NANs. I can do maybe as gonna be then get this one to request the file dot request number NANs with zero. So for C in the file columns one going forward one and meaning from the this quorum here is this, this is quorum zero one going forward uh for c in this such that df one c is equal to df one into c as type string then you get the, the, the last 20 so it's give me the 20 in this uh, this are uh, it looks like here. Yeah, I don't know why it's giving me an error here. Let's see what's there about. Need the extra variable get to be numeric. So we said it is class speaking I to df1 dot sound for I in df1 columns to one okay 
increased grass this frequency is so then put frequency like this so let's try to get the columns not give columns to one but columns starting from one you see which one i can specify the column here column is equal to we have the numbers so that I don't have this kind of issue. I can specify the column this 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, okay. Two. So it's saying I like, need that the x or y of my columns appear to be numeric. So y is equal to CR, y is equal to a list of class distribution into the keys. So I try to create this uh, distribution uh, key and it seems like it's not really in numeric form. So I can just do without this one because it's, it kind of doesn't really add any value on what I'm really working on. So let's get to the information about this file local say local df local cross id is equal to one print df shell and get the add okay so this file df info is equal to df Roco df into class id specifically class id okay one so it, it's kind of giving me all all the images where we have classification is equal to one so classification is equal to one is where we whatever where we have atherectasis so it's giving me like all the the, the head or the summary of you know we have like Two seventy-nine rows of images by seven columns with this kind of classification atherectasis. So it's equal to one. So it's giving me this. So this is the summary of that. If I want to have where we have the class ID to C code 14, I can be able to create another to see. I got two one more down then see we get this to 14 and see you see it's gave me oh whatever like how many of these with with no finding that eight thousand that's one thousand eight hundred eighteen files has no finding so if I want to check for all the abnormalities I can go specifically using this so I'm gonna go to the section 2 of doing uh, data processing uh, data pre processing the EDA uh, exploratory data analytics so I will run the data rod and see 
I'm going to use some of the repertories. It's not uh, important that I do it if I've done it above here, but at times um, I do it to make sure like, I don't really keep getting some errors if I miss to run or oh, if one of the threads like, was not really active from above. So I'm going to do an example. For the boxes, I always people people install TensorFlow input output. So this one seems like we are done loading. Yeah, we are taking care of. So from my data set, I'm going to define the decom array with the path and with arguments the path before the full root which is equal to set to true and fix the monochrome for reading like only one 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 color. So the decom is equal to pycom, then I'm reading this file using the path. Then if this one for if uh, the full root is data apply this decom pixel else get the data decom pixel array so depending on this value okay so I got this one from this guy who did show me how to do it in YouTube I need to give you my credit for this. So let's get another image and see. Let's put the images. This one I'm defining also I'm defining some good things here. This draw boxes is going to help me draw the boxes in the image, which is a 500 by 500. And the color I'll be this is the color I'll be using for those boxes 255 This is the color scale, the I'll set the color scale, scale for 255 So it's going to print the first two big images for me. I have them here, and I did have this one. I didn't really, they, I have this one in grayscale. So these are the two images. So I'm gonna do equalization for, to make sure like they are really well organized here. So they are 500 by 500, 0 to 500, 0 to 500. So they are 500 by 500. And this one, they seem to be more kind of, they're not really right. There is a lot of, there is great contrast in this. So there is the exposure dot equalizer is to this one. It seems like it tries to balance the light and the darkness, so there is that kind of great contrast, so you can be able to see some of the features better than from above. So these are my two images from part of what I'm, I've been working on here. So I'm gonna also get set the boxes in these images, so I can be able to see specifically those areas which there is any infection so i've set this to say like from the df from this training df read the file train csv such that the when i'm doing the processing i will do the repo encoder and train uh, this red repo to fit and transform the this file I will do it 
such that I'll try to find to define a finding df. I'll create this file finding df, which is created in a way that the train df in the training df I have specifically go to the class name, the classification if it's no finding. So whenever there is no finding, then create the finding df file box for for box area which will be defining df apply get the box area in axis one so this then from here i'll show how i'll create those boxes in these images whatever that is uh, no finding meaning this one when there is a exclamation behind it means like whatever that is finding so it's the opposite of no finding whatever that is an abnormality put some epochs uh, there so it has given me this is the the the, the files which i'm creating i'm kind of creating uh eliminating those files which don't have no finding so you see here i have the class ids anything else other than 14. so whatever that is this i'm creating the box those boxes they will be pointing specifically to to this area where we have uh, a finding where where there is some kind of abnormality i'll be creating those boxes so that as i go forward uh i'll be using this finding df file to uh, point or create those boxes in these images to show that there is this abnormality in this specific area so that's not an array so now this way I'm gonna put using the finding file which I've created from above. So it, it I'm, I'm bringing it down here and I'll create those boxes in those X-ray images and let's see how it wanna turn out. The boxes with the color bit of brown gets the reverse okay. It's it's working. Okay. You see now it it's showing the images it's so it's showing the the boxes in those images these are the same you see these are the same images which are from above but they are showing localization it's showing uh, boxes in the areas where there is some abnormalities so where there is an overlap of similar color like this one it means like different radiologists were able to point to the specific area like identify and promote in this area as they were doing the interpretation and that's why we have like any similar hover up meaning like it means like it's the same abnormality pointed out by many or by different radiologists like here so you you see some radiologists may may not really give an exact of course there is this one who, who are almost giving the exact location of same abnormality and this one too and we have also other ideologies from with these different numbers or different colors trying to point out to the to the same abnormality the boxes with the same in bits okay so I'm gonna plot these uh, histogram plots to show that indeed the plots are demonstrating So this these are giving me the LGP 26118 by this, it's giving me colored uh, images for this. So it seems like it's not really I'm having some issue with connection to my server, but I think 
you should give me what I need. So what do we are working on these images? Reading images at times it takes a long time and especially when you have uh, this huge data set of uh, 191 gigabytes. So that's why it's really taking me some time. My computer is a 16 GB, has 16 GB RAM, but still it's really giving me some issue. I think probably because of the internet connection because I'm using the cargo API. So at least I was able to demonstrate how we do uh, the first the, the two sections of uh, EDA, how do data routing. So what I'm remaining with, which I'll be explaining in my next uh, session, would be when I do on how I do the classification. I'll post this one to YouTube and. Uh, Feel free to share with me your feedback because through your feedback I will improve and I will become better. For those whom I use your code, I appreciate and I will I'll remember to give you credit. And if I don't, please let me know. Don't really hold me harshly on this. This is my first presentation. Uh, reach out to me and I'll give you credit whatever possible and help me improve this help me become a better person help me become that professional a better professional as i work uh, to build my experience in this area yeah thank you so much let me run very fast and see if i was able to have all my parts okay covered in this Still, it's working. My work in progress. Once I add uh, the other video on how to do all the predictions and how to build the model, I'll add into this. But meanwhile, you can be able to access 
all this in cargo i will share with you the link and for those who have anything much to share with me now to improve this be free you can reach me at cyrus dot matthews at gmail.com cyrus is s y r u s dot matthews m a t h e w s at gmail.com thank you so much it was really pressure uh, working with you so i have a few things which i'll be completing i'll be doing the model testing and evaluation and uh, do my conclusions then I will update the remaining parts into this. Thank you again. Have a good one.